Ten mugs, ten handles, ten methods. Which is the best method for attaching handles? We slipped, scored, spoozed, screwed, sewed, and used magic. We tested each method on the ease of attachment, messiness, and cracking. But more importantly, we tested each method on the pottery handle tower of death. Who will survive? Who will thrive? Who wants ice cream? Let's go! For all the handles, I use the same technique of throwing, pulling, drying, and marking, but with different suggestions on how to attach each handle. After I high-fired the mugs, we rated the methods. I'll show you all the scores, including a test for handle tensile strength using the pottery handle Tower of Death. More on that in a minute. We asked the almost 7,000 members of the Facebook Pottery Studio group what their favorite methods were to attach mug handles. Here are the favorites. First is the score and slip method. This is the way I was taught when I started throwing mugs. In this case, after the thrown mug and pulled handle were leather hard, I cut the handle to fit the mug. I marked the mug where I planned to attach the handle. I scored the mug in the handle ends with a wire tool. I brushed slip onto the scored areas of the mug. I then wiggled the top end of the handles into the slip. I did the same thing at the bottom of the handle. I then used my needle tool to blend the clay together and seal the seam at both connections. I used a wet paintbrush to smooth the clay around the seams. To reinforce the connection and add a little interest at the bottom of the handle, I like to use my thumb and flatten out the tail end and round it off like so. Just in case I distorted the handle when attaching, I like to use my wet fingers to thin down the handle edges and give it a rounded D shape. Now here's how the Tower of Death works. I place the score and slip mug at the top of the tower with the handle in a downward position. I then attached the bucket of sand to the handle and dropped it to see if the joint would withstand the force. Success! The handle survived. I give this method an overall score of 17 out of 20 due to the extra effort of making the slip, but there was no cracking and it was super strong. Next is the straight vinegar method. I implemented the same technique as the first handle, except instead of slip on the joints, I brushed on just vinegar. I've heard that you don't even have to score the clay before attaching, but on this mug, I did it anyway. The acidity of the vinegar breaks down the clay and makes it sticky. The handle really attached easily. It made for a clean joint without a lot of cleanup. It easily passed the strength test. We saw no signs of cracking and it was so easy to work with. 
This method gets high marks for a total of 19 out of 20. Next, we'll attach a handle without scoring or slipping. I cut the handle to size. I wet my fingers and flattened out the top end of the handle. I wet the area of the mug with a paintbrush and then pushed the flattened area against the mug until it was sufficiently stuck together. I used the same flattening technique at the bottom of the handle and stuck that to the mug. I did use a wet paintbrush to seal the seams and smooth the clay. After the high fire, we put it through the Tower of Death test. It passed with flying colors. The joint is strong, but because there's a little more skill involved to seal the seam, I took a couple of points off and gave it a 17 out of 20. Now we're going to use the paddle method. I took a thin piece of balsa wood and paddled the top end of the handle to increase the surface space of the thin handle end, in the hopes of making it easier to attach. Even though I didn't score the handle, I did use slip on the end to make it sticky. I wiggled it into place and then used my dry fingers to blend the clay and seal the seam. After the high fire, how did the mug fare against the Tower of Death? <laughs> Success! Upon inspection after the high fire, we did see a small crack along the edge of the top joint, but it appears superficial and did not affect the tensile strength. I did use some extra blending in place of the scoring, and in the end gave it a 16 out of 20. Next we tried paper clay. To make the clay, I hammered one third cup of dry clay, mixed in two thirds cup of shredded napkins, then poured enough water over it to cover the mixture. I let it set overnight, then hand blended it until it was smooth. Paper clay helps reduce shrinkage in the drying stage in the hopes that there will be no cracking in the jointed areas. But after the high fire, did it pass the strength test? Yes, it did. It's a little more effort and a little messier, but there was no cracks and it was a very strong attachment. I gave it a 16 out of 20. For the next one, I was introduced to a recipe called spoos. To make it, I mix 1 3rd cup of crushed clay, 1 3rd cup of Cairo syrup, and 1 3rd cup of vinegar for additional stickiness. I scored the handle, brushed on the spoos, then attached the handle. Again, we tested the joint for strength. It passed. 
In the high fire, the joint did develop a small crack along the edge, but it appears to be superficial, not affecting the strength at all. The process requires more effort and a little bit of mess. I gave it a 15 out of 20. Next, we tried magic water. To make it, I took a gallon of water and added three tablespoons of sodium silicate and one and a half teaspoons of soda ash. Now, I didn't have soda ash on hand, but it was easy to make. I took baking soda, put it in the oven at 200 degrees for an hour. It gives off carbon dioxide and water, leaving dry sodium carbonate, or soda ash. I attached the handle as usual. I even brushed the magic water along the seams to seal and smooth them. After it was high fired, we tested the strength. It easily passed. This method requires a little extra effort and materials, but provides a very strong attachment. I gave it a 17 out of 20. Next, I heard that if you attach the handle to a mug and then seal the joints with wax before the clay is dry, it'll slow the drying process in hopes of eliminating cracking. So I attached the handle as usual, brushed on a little wax around each joint. Just like the other mugs, when it was bone dry, I high fired it. Now how did it do against the Tower of Death? No problem. You have to be careful as wax can be messy. But we saw no cracking and it did provide a strong attachment. I gave it a 17 out of 20. Someone in the pottery group recommended a disc applique method. I created a flat disc out of slab and attached it to the top end of the handle by scoring and slipping. This increases the surface area of the handle so it's easier to attach. I then attached this as usual and high fired it. How did it do on the tensile strength? It passed. There was a little bit of cracking under the bottom section of the slab disc, but I just may not have sealed the seam well enough. It didn't seem to affect the handle strength, but it was a little more labor intensive, so I gave it a 16 out of 20. As you know, we test even the most off the wall ideas. Here are a couple that people have asked me about that we know that you've all wanted to try. The first involves nichrome wire and a sewing needle. Would it work to stitch the handle to the mug? Well, first I had to stick the handle to the mug as lightly as I could in order to line up the holes for the sewing. But in the end, I just wanted the stitches to hold the handle in place, not the clay. In hindsight, perhaps I should have cut little bits of sewing stabilizer to keep the wire from cutting through the clay because, well, the wire just sliced right through the clay. But we persevered. Well, what do you think? Perfect. Now let's test it on the tower. Drop it. It held. Looks like when I lightly pressed it to the mug for stitching, the handle attached itself. So we gave it a two for perseverance. Finally, I know all of you have wanted to try this one. Screwing the handle into the clay. We found some mismatched screws to use. I marked the holes and simply screwed them in. I tried not to stick the handle to the mug other than the screws. I screwed the smaller ones to the bottom. These were so short they didn't even break through to the inside of the mug. As the top screws did break through, I attached little bits of clay to cover the holes. 
I let it dry completely. I wondered if the clay would shrink around the screws and crack, but it didn't. I was nervous to fire the screws in the kiln, so I took them out and fired the handle and the mug separately. Out of the high fire, actually the small screws fit well into the top holes due to shrinkage. Because the two were fired separately, the bottom holes wouldn't line up correctly, so we weren't able to screw those back. Now how did it do with the Tower of Death? Ooh, that one came off. Ooh, it snapped right off. Well, we did give it points for ease, and it was the cleanest method we tried. Well, I think we found that all the methods, except the last two, produce strong joints. It's just a matter of what materials you have on hand and the aesthetic that you're trying to create. Now, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more fun projects. If you have any video suggestions, please leave them below in the comments. See you next time in the studio.